Hello everyone. So this is the second week of lockdown in Sri Lanka, and I am doing the this week's uh, yeah, lecture also and uploading into YouTube as a video lecture. So you guys can study it from home. And if anyone is watching this video also, that would be useful. So I'm uh, uploading this as a public video. Right. So today. We are going to learn, discuss a little bit about double lobby concepts and how to use them in game development. So actually at this point I am assuming that you have some understanding on double lobby concepts. Double lobby stands for object oriented programming or object oriented principles. So if you are not you can read a little more about object oriented programming in this wikipedia page i'll just search object oriented programming in google this will show up so basically it's about writing clean structured code which enhance the maintainability and the clarity of the code so as it says here double uh, op is a programming paradigm based on concept of objects which can contain data in form in the form of fields often known as attributes or properties and the code in the form of procedures often known as methods uh, yeah okay so let's dive into the lecture all right so before talking about uh, double op uh, let's take some simple metaphors so here what can you see so so we can see a boy playing in a sand pit and we can see some shovels and some baskets or buckets and a rake and a few other tools there is a toy also a truck well actually there are two trucks so so if i ask you to identify the different types of objects that you can see here and how many and count them so it would be a little harder for us to do that at first glance so we can say one two three showers and one and one two three four toys i mean uh, like trucks let's just say vehicles and uh, one two three four five buckets but it's still uh, it's uh, takes time it's not clear at first glance so and what about this leaf so how many single uh, these uh, leaves are there uh, so actually we can't count here we can see there is a branch and leaves but uh, we can't really count because it's not clear so same as here so now what about this picture this is the same place but here at first glance we can see six buckets and one two three four five six seven eight uh, okay um 11 tools and what are these i'm not know but three of them and yeah four of trucks so it's very easy to see what are the things that they that i can see here and how many of are there and just like this here also we can see yeah we can if we want we can count the number of leaves here and also these branches so yeah compared to the first two this one and this one this one into this one it's very clear right so so just like so just like that if we write code without any structure without any proper planning so our codes also becomes like that 
so uh, here is a sample blueprint so if you write these codes without any structure it will become messy pretty soon and later on if you have to do some changes like fixing some bugs as bugs so add some new features so basically if you have to do anything with the code then even if you have written the code it will be harder even for you to understand what is going on there so and if someone else has to fix the bugs then it would be even harder for them so yeah that's why we need to learn how to write clean codes so yeah that's why we should care about all of these coding principles best practices double op concepts and everything about everything is about writing clean code and making it keeping the clarity of the code so we can later on we can increase the maintainability of the code and uh, yeah it would be easier as we progress in any project if we have a clean a well structured code it would be easy to add new features so it would be easier to trace and spot bugs and fix them right so here also uh, this is something like uh, hierarchy of the project of maybe some classes we can think of it that way so this is a mess this is clay all right so right so now let's see how to apply uh, double op principles when we make a game so as i said earlier uh, the right uh, so if we take a uh, some game well any third person game so if we take the player character well we can identify its uh, attributes just like this it has a name and it has a speed it has a power there can be many things just uh, uh, the list can go on but let's just focus on these properties all right so now and also it can walk it can run it can jump it can attack it can block so these are also the like abilities this player character would have and if we take an enemy character so the enemy will also will have a name will have a speed will has a power um, and the enemies also can walk can run can jump can attack can block all right now in terms of double op we can consider these as attributes or as it says in the in that wikipedia page i showed you data objects which can contain data in forms of fields so here the object is this player character and these are the data same for the enemy character as well and also uh, for open and, and code uh, so based on objects which can contain data in the form of fields and code in the form of procedures often known as methods so yeah, these are abilities this character would have so can walk can run it can jump so we can consider those things as methods so this is the objects this is the data or fields and this is these are um, functions or methods right now yeah we have proper uh, if we if we are to develop this game so since this both player and the enemy character has the same structure uh, we can inherit those two characters from a same base class we can call it human class 
so this will have properties methods and events which are common for all types of humans the reason to call it as a human is because this both player and the enemy are like humans so that's the basic reason if you have different case like play is also an animal and the enemies are also an animal then you can have it like an animal class but for this case I felt like it is using human is suitable right so okay now create this human class if you are using Unreal Engine it can be called as a human called as a human character blueprint and then you can create two child classes from that human class or child blueprints and we can name them as character player or can character enemy so this concept is called inheritance the first principle in double op programming so we will be defining everything common for the for human class in this base human class and all of those methods and attributes will be inherited by these child classes and they will also have the same abilities and properties so by changing those properties let's say we want to we want this player character to be faster than the enemy character so all we have to do is change the speed property of this player character so accordingly uh, this character will have a faster speed but th still that is movement or walking so yeah that was a simple example okay so if we take one method or one function inside this human class we can take something like a walk method okay so when we call the walk method on this class this is just an example uh, that I wrote this is not a real implementation so uh, when we call walk function this walk as you can see here this uh, walk function is public and all of these properties and all of these other methods are private that means if we have a reference to this human object from another class uh, that class does not have access to these private methods or fear or attributes uh, the, it only has access to this public method all right so right now this uh, when we call the work method inside this work method even though the outside class don't know anything about these properties so these private functions this work method call all of these use all of those uh, attributes and use all of those functions and it show the working behavior so this is like um, it's called actually encapsulation that means we hide information from outside for outside classes and we expose methods so that using the method they can get things done without knowing about the how the actual implementation or actual internal data of that object so that's the second principle right now okay now consider this example in our game let's say we can shoot arrows and as you know we can shoot arrows on anything on the game world so we can shoot at player character or we can shoot at enemy character so we can shoot at uh, like a grain sack or we can shoot at an explosive barrel so there are many type of objects in the world and we can shoot arrows on all of them right so when an arrow hit one of those objects so we should invoke some method that defines what happens uh, to that object if it hit by an arrow that's the way to uh, 
make some reaction happen on that object when they hit by an arrow so how do we deal with such a scenario so actually if we have only human objects in our game we can we could create a function like on arrow hit in this uh, base human class and whenever we hit whenever one of these enemy or player characters hit by an arrow we can call that on arrow hit function which have defined which is defined in this base human class and show the appropriate reaction so the implementation of this on that on arrow hit function can be different from this one into or this one to this one but still that's the same function so we can get the reaction but the problem is these other objects they are not inherited from this base human class because they are simply they are not humans they are the objects so that approach the first approach I suggested is not practical for this scenario so a better approach to address that problem is would be using an interface we can define an interface some called a damageable or damageable object you can use any name you want and then we can implement that interface by the human class and also these other classes uh, which has reaction to which can be damageable with arrows so then using that interface we can call on arrow hit function on any object we hit basically on any object we could call the on arrow hit function using the damageable interface so if that object implements this damageable interface and according to the implementation of this on arrow hit function those objects will show the reaction for the arrow hit event so this would be like uh, draining drains draining the grains on the ground with the hole or this would be like exploding this humans will be like they will uh, their health will be reduced and blood splatter will appear so like that so this concept is called abstraction so we have abstracted that means like abstraction means like dealing with ideas uh, rather than rather than dealing with the, uh, how they are implemented to events so this on narrow hit has been abstracted uh, irrespective of the classes or the objects to this damageable interfaces interface using this on narrow hit this is the this is like a concept an idea regardless of the interface regardless of the implementation or any other detail so the arrow does not have to know about what is the object they are hitting what kind of object they are hitting they don't have to know anything all they have to do is use the function use the interface and call the function that's all so there is no dependency between the arrow object and this the objects that the arrow is hit by right now uh, the other concept is polymorphism so yeah when we get an enemy we can create different enemy types by inheriting and creating child classes from the enemy class and they will have different weapons different attack types so different health so can be heavy enemies can be like light enemies so various kinds of enemies okay and uh, we can override their attack functions and give a different behavior for their attack is maybe different attack animations or different attacking powers or different shouts so we can basically override the attack animation of this main of this base class and 
create a different behavior so this is called polymorphism that means even though we are using the same we are invoking the same attack function based on the implementation of that class uh, it will show a different behavior so that's called polymorphism right now another thing that we need to understand when writing clean codes is cohesion the, co the concept of cohesion so to understand this let's uh, consider an example so just look at this image so what you can see so I can say this is a woman and uh, the her left side represents like a pan a broom so like a hammer so like household stuff right and the right side represents things like a, a file and a phone and coffee and a, a telephone and a mobile phone so this is more like um office stuff right so like an employee like a worker so now so these are interrelated functions because these are office stuff and these are also interrelated because these are household stuff but if we consider this side and this side they don't have a proper relationship because we can see they are not belong they don't belong together so this is weak cohesion so instead of what we should have done is we could have if we consider them as like objects or classes we could have two classes like as an employee as a housewife so the housewife has only household stuff or functions and the employee has only office stuff so this is in this structure uh, the cohesion is strong compared to previous case because uh, each class has only related functions right now consider this example class 1 can accelerate break horn turn over tail and class 2 can accelerate break turn horn dance and cry and class 3 eat sleep walk dance cry and laugh so if I ask you to come up with names for these classes so let's see we can think of class 1 as a vehicle because accelerating braking turning horning over there sounds like vehicle stuff right and if we consider class 3 eat sleep walk dance cry laugh we can consider it maybe as a human because all of these are human stuff but if we consider the class 2 it has accelerate, break, turn, horn, dance, cry. These are sounds like this sounds like a vehicle or maybe a driver, and also these things sounds like human stuff. So coming up with the name for the class two is a little bit uh, harder than class one and class three. A little bit confusing so maybe a driver or a human car or something so this is a sign that we can identify v cohesion so if we have if we have any some confusions coming up with a name for this class that means the cohesion of this class is weak the if we can easily come up with a clear name without any confusion that means it has a strong cohesion in that class 
and the next concept is coupling so it says it is said that uh, coupling means the extent to which components or classes depend on one another so it's like uh, connections between classes so loose coupling is better and tight coupling makes the code harder to understand and maintain so we should go for we should always try to have loose coupling between classes so in this example right we have a report class and a printer class and an example case so in this example what we do is we create a report object and my report load from file so this report has load from file and then it loads the file and then we ask the printer to print that loaded file okay so here the structure is better actually there are no confusions we can see this printer is printing and report can load and save so oh this image is not very clear let's consider this example so we have math params parameters class and math util class and space shuttle class so in this space shuttle uh, we set the math parameter operand to 64 and we call and then we call square root function on the math util and then we write the result of the math parameter so now here the problem is in this square root it uses this math parameter operand and set the math parameter result right now if we that part is not visible here because uh, it happens inside this function so then we write the result into the console here so now we don't know what would be the result of this actually we know because we can see the class here but if we consider only in this level it's not clear what's going on because there is a dependency between a hidden dependency between hidden a coupling between this inside this square root class with the math parameters which is not visible from outside so this is an example for tight coupling so writing code like this is always bad okay <coughs> and yeah with that i'd like to conclude this session this lecture and if you have any questions you can let me know in the comments so yeah yeah you can let me know in the comments you can't ask because we are not in the classroom all right so thanks for watching and stay safe these days and we will see you soon we will see each other soon and after the lockdown is over I hope it will not take longer and yeah see you in the next lecture goodbye